This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Arthur Betterbiev is a tremendous talent with exceptional power, and he proved that once again this past weekend, when he successfully defended his unified light heavyweight crown against Anthony Yard. It was an entertaining fight. Both guys exhibited heart and courage, both guys landed and absorbed some terrific punches, and there were a lot of action-packed rounds. But in the end, the bludgeoning power of Better Biev won the day. The champion dropped the challenger hard in round eight, and Yard bravely tried battling on, but his corner and the ref had more or less simultaneously seen enough shortly after action resumed. With that victory, Better Biev's record improved to a perfect 19 victories in 19 contests, with all 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Since winning the vacant IBF belt a bit over five years ago, Better Biev has made seven title defenses, including victories in unification bouts against Oleksandr Vazdik in 2019 and Joe Smith Jr. in June of last year. Better Biev is the reigning unified IBF WBC WBO World Light Heavyweight Champion. Despite the mighty impressive run to date, Better Biev just turned 38 years old. And he does seem to have slowed down a bit, despite the wrecking ball power and accompanying perfect record. Which begs the question, at an advanced age when reflexes, speed, power, and durability are generally in decline for most prize fighters, is Better Biev still good enough to beat the man who has been his most logical rival for a number of years already, that man being Dmitry Bivol? The quick answer is he is certainly good enough that he could beat the talented tactician in Bivol, but at this point I am not so certain he would. Make no mistake, Arthur Betterbiev is an absolute powerhouse. Those short powerful right hands, bludgeoning left hooks, and his other wide variety of punches in his offensive arsenal are the real deal. Arthur can hit. And that sledgehammer power is good enough that he could conceivably stop any boxer during the long, rich history of the 175-pound weight class, including towering legends from the past. Guys like Ezard Charles and even Archie Moore, the old mongoose himself. I'm certainly not saying he would beat them. And he certainly hasn't faced anyone remotely approaching that caliber. But Better Biev's game changing power makes him someone who is impossible to ever completely write off in any hypothetical bout at 175. So obviously, and I do believe this is a self evident fact, Better Biev has the firepower that he most certainly could beat a guy like Bivol. But at the same time, something we have seen through boxing history time and time again is that it often takes a smooth operator with a great abundance of smarts and technical skills to slay a power-punching monster like Better Biev. In that light, Bivol potentially represents Better Biev's kryptonite. Bivol excels at using angles. He has terrific footwork, a tremendous understanding of range and distance, and he provides a very slippery target who is difficult to nail clean. The thing of it is, better Biev can box a little too. He proved years ago that he isn't just some predictable power-punching one-dimensional pressure fighter. Better Biev isn't the quickest guy, but what he lacks in raw athleticism and agility, he makes up for with a deceptively high ring IQ. And not just because he has an awesome understanding of distance and an uncanny ability to discover his optimal range. Better Biev is a thinking man's fighter who is always studiously finding ways to offset his opponent's grand strategy, but also the micro strategy at any given moment in the ebb and flow. He is an offensive-minded puncher who has a very nuanced and varied approach. The thing I think impresses me most about Better Biev, notorious power aside, is the fact that whenever something isn't working for him, or whenever things aren't going his way, he remains focused, with an ability to quickly assess his predicament and act accordingly. 
Whether it's biding his time, subtly changing things up, or going with the flow and battling it out where he can be very sneaky with his delivery of dangerous blows. These attributes were especially on display in his bouts against Vazdik and Yard, and the times he was knocked down against Page, and then also the time he was dropped hard by Callum Johnson. In both instances, Better Biev persevered. He exhibited championship heart, and he ultimately overcame adversity and stopped Page and Johnson. That's the thing about Better Biev that has become more and more apparent. Despite not being the fastest or most athletic boxer, his nuanced skill set becomes even more impressive when you consider how those skills complement his strengths, which enabled him to consistently find ways to accurately deliver that nuclear power in dramatic fashion. The fact remains, however, that Better Biev has never faced anyone quite as skilled and talented as Bivol. On the flip side, Bivol has never faced a powerhouse skilled puncher like Better Biev. That is what makes this one so damn interesting. It is arguably the greatest fight that can be made in all of boxing right now. And it has been the most logical fight at 175 for some time now. Unfortunately, for various reasons, it hasn't come together. But right now, the timing couldn't be better for a showdown for light heavyweight supremacy. So in conclusion, I definitely think better BF is good enough to beat Bivol, despite him slowing down and getting up there in age. But in order for better BF to beat Bivol, he is going to need to succeed in making his power a big factor in the fight. The nuanced and deceptive skill set won't do him much good if he cannot find ways to land on the slippery tactician with an incredible IQ in his own right. Bevel is unquestionably the more skilled of the two, and he is also more athletic, more versatile, younger, and in his prime right now. Better Biev's power has been on display in all 19 of his pro fights to date, and he's going to need that power to work for him if he's going to have a chance to beat Bevel. Even if that means landing clubbing blows on the arms and shoulders, as Canelo frequently did when he was unable to accurately nail the mark with any real consistency. After all, there is reason to believe that better BF pounding away on his arms and shoulders might prove a greater deterrent than when Canelo was doing it. At the end of the day, I have no idea who would win between better BF and Bevel, but as a longtime boxing fan, I sure hope we get to find out sometime very soon, because the styles couldn't be any more different, and with the high stakes and historical significance in play, that makes this one inherently super appealing. Here's to hoping it happens. What do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.